Welcome to my course, Algebra 1. Uh, you will totally not regret enrolling here. I am Sharday, your instructor. So now for our first lesson, we will start with the root of them all. This is the real number system. Okay, so the real number system is a system of numbers used in algebra and of all the higher maths you will be taking up. Okay, we will start with the um, first of all, okay, let's study the types of numbers that will make up the real number system. And we'll start with the natural numbers or also called the counting numbers or the set of positive integers. Okay, and then we denote that as our um, double script N here. Okay, or we simply call it as N. So we start here since we first learned how to count, right? So this is um, um, your number. So if you're going to imagine a number line, so if you're going to imagine a number line here, um, the natural numbers are found on the right side of this number line since, uh, again, they're positive numbers. They're the set of positive integers. Um, we're going to, we're going to um, tackle about integers in a while. And they are found here in this part. Okay. This ellipsis um, means that it's going to continue on and on until um, the highest number, the, the more higher numbers, rather. Okay, so the set of the next... Um, the next um, part of our real number system is a set of the whole numbers, right? So the next set is the whole numbers. Um, it's only your natural numbers um, with your zero. Okay, so this symbol here means union, which means it's added together with our natural numbers. So that's our whole numbers. So we have here this zero in this part. Okay. This is also known as a set of non-negative integers. Again, we're going to tackle integers after this. Um, also called as the whole numbers. This is the first expansion of the natural numbers, which includes the zero. Um, just disclaimer there. Um, there are some books that include the zero in our natural numbers. And we will not do it here. Instead, we will call the first list of the positive integers to be... Or the first list of the positive numbers with the zero to be whole numbers. Okay, so zero is not part of the natural numbers in our book. Okay, so again, um, zero is not part of the natural numbers in our book. Okay, now for every positive integer, there exists a negative integer, which is um, a pair of it. Okay, so this um, integers, if we're going to list all the pairs of the, the pair of one, two, three on the negative side, we call them the list of all integers. Okay, so this integer is denoted by our Z, a double script Z. Um, why is it called Z? It's, why is it written here as Z? Um, Z stands for Zahlen, which is a German word for numbers. Well, maybe, um, you know, uh, George Cantor is the one who created this system, this uh, sim symbols. So he's German. Maybe this is why it's Z here in the integers. So what are the integers? It's, um, it's your whole numbers here. As you can see, just copy the zero union N. And this time with the z minus. So when I say z minus, these are the negative integers. Okay, so the pair of 1, there's a, a, a counter negative here, which is negative 1. 2 has a negative 2, 3 has a negative 3, and so on. Um, actually, your z or your, your z positive is the positive integers. This n can also be written as z positive. So either way, it's still the same. Okay, so integers are just numbers without fractional parts to make it um, easier, okay? Uh, no fractional parts visible in the number itself. This is where we will perform the fundamental operations that have readied video lectures after this. So to dedicate our time in doing our fun four fundamental operations in integers. Okay, so in the division of integers, um, so again, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So in, in, in division of integers, there are some um, answers that result to numbers like negative one-half, one-half, three halves, four-thirds, and the like. Then the arithmetic of fractions was developed. So when we put the fractions into the picture here, so again, negative one is and negative one between negative one and zero, there is negative one half there. Um, between zero and one, there's one half there. Between one and two, there's three halves there, and so on. So we call this our fractions. Okay, our pure fractions. So our fractions are denoted by z complement. Why is it called z complement? Because it's the complement of z. Remember your set theory. When you say complement, it's not z. So when you say z integers, if they're not integers, um, they are fractions. Okay. So we have z here, z and 
the not z, if we're going to combine them and put them in one set, we call them the rational numbers. Okay, so these are our rational numbers. So the entire collection of signed numbers, including fractions, and zero is called the system of rational numbers. Rational numbers have decimal representation also. We're not limited with the fractional part. Though the definition of a rational number is one which can be written in the form of A over B, Okay, imagine it as a fraction, a over b, where a and b are integers and b, the denominator, must not be equal to zero. Okay, that's a, 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 a strict restriction, a restriction that um, the denominators must not be equal to zero because, well, we don't want that to happen. We'll explain it in a while uh, after several video lectures, I think. Okay, so every rational number, every fraction, Okay, every rational number or every fraction has its own decimal representation. And we are strictly saying that when it is a rational number, its decimal representation must be either terminating or repeating. Get that? Okay, either terminating or repeating. For example, when you have one half, its decimal representation is 0 0.5. Okay, again, one half, 0 0.5. Um, that's it. So the 0.5 terminates and... That's it. It's a rational number. It satisfies that it's terminating. And when I say repeating, for example, um, say we have one-third. One-third, the decimal representation of one-third is 0 0.33333 and so on. Uh, usually, you're going to put, you're going to see ellipses after several threes or a ventilum above one-three, which means it's, it repeats. So that's also a rational number in decimal representation because it satisfies by definition that it's repeating. Okay, so those are rational numbers in decimal form. Hopefully, you understood that. And after this um, number line here, uh, we will input a lot of fractions. Of course, there's fractions here, fractions here, fractions here, and blah, 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 blah. So um, there is, there's another set of numbers which we call irrational numbers. Okay, so th since our Q, anyways, our rational numbers are denoted by Q, which means quotient. Okay, Q for quotient, meaning again, it's it could be in a in a ratio, and one more thing, rational numbers doesn't mean it that's in the mind, right? When you say rational, it's in the mind. Um, other, um, rather, rather, um, it came from the word ratio. When you say ratio, again, it it could be put in a fraction. So ratio, actually, ratio null. Okay, that's why ratio null. Okay, but either way, it, could, it can be um, read as rational. And um, nonetheless, um, we have this other set which we call irrational numbers that's denoted by Q complement. Again, it's not Q, therefore it's not rational, Ugh, you know, irrational. So these irrational numbers were introduced in the study of geometric figures, such as in the circles, in the triangles, and the constant ratio of the circumference of the circle by its diameter, we call that the pi. Okay, and the length of a diagonal of a square with side one, or a unit side, that's the square root of 2. Okay, again, um, the length of the diagonal of a square with side 1 is the square root of 2. So what are these numbers? Actually, irrational numbers um, are the ones that fill in the holes of this number line. Um, along this number line of ours, there are some holes wherein the rational numbers cannot satisfy. So the irrational numbers are the one that fill in those holes. So say, for example, we have our E here, our Euler's number. That's 2.718281828. Um, there's no fraction that can uh, fill in in that hole in our um, number line. So irrational numbers do that part. Okay. For pi, pi is 3.1415, blah, blah, blah. So um, there's no fractional part which satisfies the 3.1415, blah, blah, blah. So therefore, irrational numbers fill in those holes. Okay, so we have a lot more rational numbers. Um, square root of 2 is, a, is an irrational number. Square root of 3 is an irrational number. Square root of 5, square root of 4 cannot be because it's an integer, right? Square root of 4 is 2. So um, actually, any any um, imperfect square is an irrational number. Cube root of 2, cube root of 3. Anything that cannot be taken out of the radical sign is a irrational. It's an irrational number. And some um, particular constants are also irrational, as you can see here. So those are our irrational numbers. Okay. Also, they have this decimal representation, um, which is the complete opposite of our rational numbers, which are terminating or repeating. Um, when you say that, when you 
mean the, the decimal representation of irrational numbers, they are the non-terminating and they are non-repeating. For example, in our um, pi, 3.141592, blah, 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 blah. As you can see, if we're going to continue, um, there's no repetition of numbers there. Except some point of, of, of the pi where it repeats somehow. But um, if we're going to continue after that repetition, it will not repeat again. Okay, so it's not, not repeating and uh, certainly it's not terminating. Okay, if we're going to search on Google, um, there's a lot of um, researchers that um, write down manually the value of pi and they, and they complete a series of books because of that. Okay, so um, it's non-terminating uh, in fact. Also in our E, E is 2.71828459045923, uh, blah, 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 and it's not terminating and it's also not repeating. So those are the important uh, characteristics of irrational numbers when you put that in decimal representation. Okay, so the collection of all these numbers here in our number line, the rational specifically and the irrational, is what we call the system of real numbers, denoted by our double script R. The R here is equal to our Q, our rational, and our irrational numbers. So these are the numbers that we shall work with. And later, a bigger system of numbers, the complex numbers will be um, introduce uh, if we have the time um, rational numbers uh, rather complex numbers are numbers with a, with I that's the imaginary number okay so we're making use of this one-dimensional system here this line to visualize the correspondence between the set of real numbers and points on a straight line as shown here so the set of real numbers as represented on the line can be viewed as a continuum of real numbers or of integers or numbers. First, pair each rational number with a point on the line. However, not every point on the line can be labeled as a rational number. That's why we input by filling up the holes, we write the rational numbers. And so therefore, by putting up the rational numbers alongside with the irrational, with the irrational numbers, we create the real line. Okay, so we can put it in a diagram to show it um, well, in the in a more complete way, so you can see we can start here from the very bottom. Um, the very bottom here says natural numbers. Again, the natural number plus the zero, we call that our whole numbers. The whole numbers plus the negative integers, um, we call that our integers. Our z um, integers plus the fractions this is the z prime, or rather, sorry, the z complement integers plus z plus z complement are the rational numbers. And lastly, our rational numbers. Combine it with our irrational numbers, we call that the real numbers. Okay, so this is our real number system. This is the system that we're going to work on um, as we go along. Actually, we, the system does not stop here. We have a complex system above this real number. Just pair the real numbers with the i. i is the square root of minus 1. That's your complex number. That's what we have then, the, comp the system of complex numbers then. After the same system of complex numbers, we have our quaternions, we have our, after that we have our octonions, we have our septonions, and the more, the higher we go up in the system, the, the more abstract we, we become, meaning the more unreal it is in the real world. So um, that's why it's called real numbers, because well, it's used in the real world, and actually if we're going to look at our history books, it's called real numbers just because to distinguish it from imaginary numbers. Okay, blame Euler for that. Anyways, so that's it for our first video. Actually, the purpose of this video is for you to only familiarize the terminologies of the system because more often than not, we tend to forget the terminologies and confuse them with the new terminologies we learn along the way, ending up with the confusion, confusion of them all. Okay, so I recommend you to watch and rewatch this video. Anyways, you have the full access of this course. You can always go back here and see this for a couple, let's say a thousand of times as you want. So uh, as much as you need and want it. So enjoy and see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.